Junkyards are tiny havens for those of us that love machines. But you don't have to be a total gearhead to appreciate just how cool gigantic piles of abandoned tanks, rows upon rows of abandoned cars, or mind-blowing huge ghost fleets of aircraft can be. And that's just the tip of the scrap pile. So buckle yourself in tight and get ready to check out some of the largest and most amazing junkyards in the world. Tank Trash Here's a question you've never thought to ask. If you found yourself with 6,500 tanks that you no longer had use for, how would you store them? Well, after the fall of the Soviet Union in 1991, that exact question loomed over the Ukraine. Without any real storage options, a vast portion of their huge reserve of tanks ended up here. This is the depot of the enormous Malyshev factory in Kharkiv, almost 20 miles from the Russian border. It's absolutely crammed with rows upon rows of these once deadly war machines. Many, as you can see, have been sat rusting and corroded over time. Although it's not known exactly how many are packed into the almost 11 million square foot facility, it's estimated that about 400 Soviet-built tanks are cluttering up the compound. And they include Model T-72s, so it's not like these are your granddaddy's antique war wagons. They're 44 tons of bad news and very big guns. When new, models like the T-72 would have been worth between $500,000 and $1.2 million. So, along with all the other similar models in here, it's very possible that these 400 rust buckets had firepower once worth over $400 million. That's some serious fighting flair, although it seems like all they're waging a war against now are the weeds. Those tanks may be past their heyday, but I'll tell you what's still very much in working condition, the like and subscribe button on this video. Duh. Why not give them a click to make sure they're not all rusty? In fact, I go digging through the junkyard of the internet to bring you amazing content like this every day. Show that bell icon some love so you never miss out. For now though, let's get back to the real life junkyards. The Cavern of Lost Souls Despite the ominous name, the Cavern of Lost Souls isn't a giant hole that people have been thrown into. But it is a giant hole that people have thrown their garbage into. This cavern, discovered in the Kedadigion region of Wales, was once a slate mine. But when mining activity in the region began to decline, it was abandoned before laying flooded and silent for over 60 years. However, parts of top rock began to fall through, opening large holes on the surface. Not wanting to waste an opportunity, locals decided to use the holes as massive and illegal dumping sites. Since then, the cavern has been transformed into a cornucopia of junk that's been thrown down into the dark. But nobody knew just how much was down there until the cavern was photographed by urban explorers in 2014. Across the murky waters, you can see items ranging from household waste to entire cars from across the ages in different states of decay. Explorers of this underground junkyard have braved the corroding mountain of cars and even discovered a sword in all the junk. What kind of person throws away a sword? Probably the same kind that rolls their car into a giant hole in the mountainside. Along with the very prominent late 60s blue Ford Cortina you can see, it's thought that there are about 100 cars in this subterranean junkyard. Talk about a pileup. Motorcycle Cemetery now here's a real abandoned treasure for all the bikers out there. This amazing trove of old motorcycles and choppers is all that remains of Cole's Motorcycle Salvage, once based in Lockhart, New York. The owner presided over several different bike shops and collected a huge variety of motorcycles for over 50 years, but he sadly died in 2002. Being so badly dilapidated, the council condemned the building and barred anyone from entering. And yet, this doesn't seem to be enough warning to keep urban explorers from wanting to catch a glimpse of what lay within. Armed with cameras, many managed to get in and take photos of the incredible contents of this slowly degrading site. As you can see, huge amounts of these classic and vintage sets of wheels were in real bad shape. 
but that didn't mean they didn't have value. Some of the models plucked from the carnage, like this Honda CB350 from 1968, can be sold for upwards of $3,000 in the right condition. Many others, like this Jawa frame that dated back to the 1950s, could be refurbished and sold for approximately $8,000. Heartbreakingly, almost all the bikes were removed and scrapped in 2010, and the building itself burned to the ground in 2013. What an absolute tragedy. I guess all we can do is pray that there's a motorbike afterlife. Radiation Station the ghostly remains of the areas surrounding the Chernobyl nuclear reactor site are haunting, to say the very least. But what's just as creepy are images of the region's contaminated vehicles that were left to rot in the Rosica Equipment Cemetery. The cleanup operation that followed the explosion and radioactive meltdown at Chernobyl's nuclear power plant required many vehicles to help evacuate residents and deal with the damage. But once it was done, the helicopters, military trucks, buses, and many more vehicles that had been used were abandoned at this site in Rosica, just 25 kilometers southwest of the former power plant. They were heavily contaminated with deadly radiation and couldn't be recovered. Some were so badly contaminated that they were buried in order to stem the amount of radiation flooding the area, turning the field into a literal burial ground. More recent photos taken of the vehicles stored on the topsoil showed that many had pieces missing from suspected illegal salvage operations. For over 20 years, these slowly degrading vehicles served as desolate reminders of one of the world's worst nuclear accidents. But efforts in the early 2010s saw most of the fields cleared of the debris and cut up for scrap. Today, almost nothing remains but the memory of the terrifying events that took place decades earlier. Tank Graveyard On the outskirts of Asmara, the capital city of Eritrea, East Africa, lies a colossal collection of old military and civilian equipment that's been put on display for a very important reason. Part junkyard and part war memorial, this huge assortment of rusting vehicles serves as a monument to the war Eritrea fought with Ethiopia for 30 years. During the war for Eritrea's independence, which raged on from 1961 to 1991, Ethiopian forces would hide their destroyed military equipment outside Asmara. The method behind the madness was that leaving it on the streets for all to see would strengthen Eritrean morale, which was, of course, the very last thing they wanted. But after Eritrea's victory, much of the remaining machinery spread across the country was dragged to the same spot, gradually growing into a giant scrapyard. During this time, the country had at least 74 tanks at its disposal. But there are thought to be hundreds here, with many of them having been captured from Ethiopian forces. Although many of these vehicles have now been corroded beyond recognition, that doesn't stop the place from being one of the most historically important junkyards in the world. Tire Trash Pile Some of mankind's greatest achievements can be seen from space. The pyramids of Giza, the man-made islands of Dubai, and not forgetting Kuwait's tire graveyard. That's right, a tire graveyard. In the sandy reaches of Kuwait City's Sulabia area, gigantic holes are excavated and filled with old tires that have come to the end of the road. Approximately 1 billion tires are scrapped globally every single year. But because tires aren't naturally biodegradable, many of them end up in storage facilities or landfills, just like this one. These gigantic craters are filled with over 7 million tires, and every year even more craters are dug and filled, continuing the vicious cycle. I mean, just take a look at this image of the site from 2013 compared to this image from 2020. It just keeps growing. But size isn't the only problem. Kuwait's intense heat means that the area is at a constant risk of setting on fire. In 2012, a fire broke out in the nearby tire landfill of Al Jara burning around 5 million tires and producing so much smoke that it could be seen from space. Can you imagine how much worse things would be if the Sulaibia Tire Graveyard caught fire? That's one burning question no one needs answered. Supercar Necropolis If you're looking for a cheap Ferrari, Bentley, or even a Rolls Royce, you need to stop looking on eBay and start looking in the UAE Bay instead. Say hello to the Supercar Graveyard of Sharjah in Dubai, home to these once pristine vehicles which have now gathered thick layers of dust after being abandoned for years. 
but beneath the filth, you can find expensive Mustangs, costly Corvettes, and even classic Volkswagen Beetles. Nearby, in another part of Sharjah's industrial suburb, a huge lot of crashed supercars contains brand new looking Ferraris, Bentleys, Range Rovers, the list goes on. Even though this isn't the largest junkyard in the world, it's certainly one of the most expensive. After laying eyes on this so-called junkyard of formerly flashy cars, you'd be forgiven for thinking some people in the United Arab Emirates just have more money than sense. But the truth is far more shocking. Most of these cars belonged to big businessmen and expats who hit fiscal ruin after the financial crash of 2008. But the debt laws of the United Arab Emirates are some of the strictest in the world, with debtors being sentenced to jail time of up to three years. So it seems these debtors decided to ditch their fancy rides in exchange for a plane ticket out of there. Now, I'm certainly no car expert, especially cars which have sat rotting in their own ready-made graveyard, but I'd love to know how much one of these former beauties would set you back these days. Could any of you four-wheeled aficionados take a stab at it? Let me know if I can afford that sweet Corvette in the comments below. Railroad Refuse it's not just planes and automobiles that wind up in some of the world's most expensive junkyards. After all, have you ever seen a junkyard on rails like this one? This derelict mechanical conga line is the locomotive graveyard of Larry's Truck and Electric, found in Ohio. There are hundreds of abandoned first and second generation locomotives filling up these tracks, with some, like this Harbor Belt 8859, having been built way back in the 1950s. Isn't it amazing to think some of these trains were the very first of their kind? But this wide variety of old locomotives isn't just for display. Larry's Truck and Electric will scrap, rebuild, and resell these trains, shipping them out via the connected railroad. The yard and its tracks sit off the main Chessie Seaboard Merger mainline, which is a freight railroad operating in the eastern United States. But the yard contains trains from many different rail lines, like Amtrak, Burlington North Rail, Conrail, and many others, as you can see. Personally, I think it's a shame we can't preserve this amazing graveyard of trains gone by. What do you guys think? Are they best preserved or abandoned? Spanish Scrapyard Some people visit Spain for the great wine and weather, but those things aren't for everyone. Why not check out the biggest machine scrapyard in Europe instead? Say hola to Descuaques Casquero. This gigantic compound just north of Benevente is just under 2.5 million square feet and is crammed with just about every construction machine and agricultural vehicle imaginable. Hundreds of machines, like these retired excavators and these rows of once mighty earth movers, can be found basking in the scorching Spanish sun. The hot, dry climate here means that many of these vehicles can remain in relatively good condition for much longer. So long, in fact, that some seriously vintage models, like these Caterpillar 631B scrapers built in 1978, are still in good working order and are ready to go. While some of these amazing machines can be sold on, most are stripped down for their parts and for salvage. Seems like an absolute paradise for anyone with motor oil running through their veins. Saudi Scrap Heaps We all know Saudi Arabia is renowned for its oil, the second largest reserves in the world, in fact. But what about its lesser-known asset, one of the world's biggest junkyards? This sprawling hub of smashed vehicles is southeast of Riyadh, the capital city of Saudi Arabia, in an area known as Uride. Almost all cars written off by accidents or designated as scrap from the nearby capital city end up here. Everything from cars to buses can be found piled up high on top of one another. But whilst this metallic chaos may look like an eyesore to some, it's a huge business opportunity for others. Spread out across the almost 1.5 mile wide allotments are hundreds of used parts and car dealers. But how has this area grown to such a colossal size? Well, for a long time, Riyadh has had a problem with its citizens driving dangerously outdated cars. The climate of the area is hot and arid, meaning that cars here don't really rust as much as they age, so they last much longer. Instead of upgrading cars, people lean towards replacing parts with spares they can easily salvage from these junkyards. And seeing just how massive this area is, I bet you could find almost any part you needed. Although you'd better have some time on your hands, because by the looks of it, it's gonna take some digging. Underwater Scrap Heap 
Off the southeastern point of the island of Espiritu Santo, Vanuatu, lies an incredible monument of wartime pettiness. This is the Million Dollar Point, and beneath the waves, humongous piles of American military equipment from the Second World War litter the sea floor. You can see coral-encrusted bulldozers, the corroded remnants of ships, the metal bones of drowned vehicles, and all sorts of other wartime debris. But how did this fortune of disused equipment find its way down here? Well, Espiritu Santo used to hold a U.S. military base in the French-controlled Vanuatu Islands. At the conclusion of the Second World War, the Americans offered to sell everything on the base to the French for just six cents to the dollar. But France rejected the deal, knowing the Americans had limited transport ships and would be forced to leave much of it behind. In other words, they thought they could get it all for free. In an act of unbelievable spite, the Americans decided to drive the millions of dollars worth of equipment, clothing, vehicles, and even cases of Coca-Cola into the ocean instead. If the French wouldn't pay, no one would have it. Today, this political petty scrap heap lies wasted on the ocean floor. But at least the local fish have found a good use for it. Car Scrappage Site of all the things you'd envision on a disused runway, I don't think anyone would expect to find over $35 million worth of old and classic cars. But that's exactly the case at the UK's RAF Thurley. The UK government's 2009 scrappage scheme incentivized citizens to scrap their old cars by giving them over $2,500 off a new car, meaning thousands of older models were turned in. However, as the sheer number of cars began to overwhelm mechanics, the former airfield of Thurley was turned into a scrappage site for around 14,000 of the excess vehicles. As you can see here, the cars have been lined up nose to tail, waiting to be licensed to a junkyard before being stripped of their parts and recycled. But it's not just old family cars clogging up the runway. Classic and rare old cars also make up the ranks, like this incredible lineup of Porsche 944s, rows of old Volkswagen Beetles, and even classic Mini Coopers. During the initial backlog of cars dating back to 2010, it's estimated the old airfield was home to around 28 million pounds worth of vehicles. That's over $35 million. For all that dough, you could buy at least three of the new Bugatti Centodicis with change to spare. Talk about a trade-in. Ship Breaking Bays The gigantic coastal junkyard of Ghadani, Pakistan is the final resting place of hundreds of huge oil tankers and old ships. Once they're floated into the breaker bays, these mighty vessels are all broken down section by section for scrap. While this process may look cool, workers here mainly use hand tools to break the ship down and earn between just $3.50 and $8 a day. So this junkyard might actually be one of the last places on Earth anyone would want to work. At capacity, Gadani's 134 ship-breaking lots are filled to the brim with colossal ships like these that have all run their course. All along the six-mile stretch of coast, the gigantic piles of scrap from the ship are stacked up on the shores. Oil left over in the condemned tankers is siphoned off and sold, and almost every part of the ship is dismantled for recycling. While the stripping time of these wave-riding behemoths depends on their size, workers can break them down in a matter of months, sometimes even weeks. In just one year, Gadani can have over 100 of these gargantuan ships dismantled. I guess it's not just the seas around here that are choppy. Volkswagen Scandal Do you remember the Volkswagen emission scandal? If you need a little reminder, just take a look at the Volkswagen storage facility of Victorville, California. Oh, sorry, did I say little? I meant giants. Those are rows upon rows of diesel Volkswagens packed into a sun-bleached desert graveyard. For some perspective, that plane you see measures almost 200 feet long, so this site is truly gargantuan. But why are so many of them here? In 2015, the headlines were dominated by a scandal after the Environmental Protection Agency found that the German car giant had installed software into its diesel cars to cheat emission tests. The revelation forced Volkswagen to buy back almost 350,000 highly polluting vehicles, costing it about $7.4 billion. Nowadays, in order to store the cars, Volkswagen uses 37 facilities all over the U.S., including this 134-acre patch of land in the California desert. 
A staggering 21,000 cars have been crammed into this space and will remain here until they're either upgraded or destroyed. Although this may not be a junkyard in the typical sense, it's most definitely still full of junk. Share bike graveyards. Take a look at this image. What do you see? A field of tulips, right? Wrong. It's actually one of the many share bike graveyards littered around China. Do you remember when share bikes were all the rage, like the ones from Lime Bike, Spin, and Ofo? These GPS-enabled bikes could be unlocked using a smartphone and take you from A to B without the need to park at a dock. Whilst they had some relative success in the US, they were a huge hit in China. The country's economy took a mammoth $500 billion from 600 million users of the bike in 2017 alone. Despite the big profits, there was an even bigger downside lurking around the corner. China's city infrastructure wasn't ready to suddenly handle millions of shared bikes, resulting in a lot of illegal parking and impounding. Rapid production growth suddenly outpaced demand, and thousands of bikes were left collecting dust. As the cities continued to impound them, some of these collections became so huge and were stacked so high that cranes were needed to reach the top of them. Massive lots of abandoned bikes were piled up around the country, and some were left for so long that nature started to reclaim them. It's unknown exactly how many still haunt China's cities, but at their peak, Shanghai alone had at least 1.5 million bikes, and Beijing had 2.3 million. That's enough for one bike for every 12 of those city citizens. Seems like someone should have pumped the brakes on this bicycle bonanza a little sooner. The Boneyard Ever wondered what happens to the American nation's militarized aircraft when they need to be scrapped? Wonder no more. Welcome to the largest aircraft graveyard in the world, the Boneyard. Formerly known as the 309th Aerospace Maintenance and Regeneration Group, the Boneyard is a storage facility stretched across four square miles of the Davis-Monthan Air Force Base in Arizona. The group manages all types of excess government and military equipment, like this armada of Boeing B-52s, retired F-16 Fighting Falcons, and excess Cobra helicopters. Even missile launchers like that of the Titan II make an appearance here. Here, the group manages approximately 4,000 aircraft, and in their current state, they hold a value of about $35 billion. But what becomes of these giant aircraft when they're no longer fit to take to the skies? Many are here for long-term storage, so they're given a thorough cleaning, sealed, and covered with a white vinyl coat called Spraylet to protect their components from heat damage. Next, they're stripped of their parts, which are sold back to the military to keep other aircraft flying. In a typical year, all the parts returned can be worth around $500 million. But once almost every usable part has been reclaimed, they're broken down into scrap and recycled. Not to sound cheesy, but recycling has never looked so fly. If you could visit one of these incredible junkyards, which one would you most like to check out? And if you've ever made an incredible find at a junkyard you think would amaze me, why not let me know in the comments? As always, thanks for watching.